everybody. It's summer. I am here at the Canova booth at the Arlington NARBC. We are going to take a look around and see what's here at the show. Let's go. We're Treehouse Geckos, yes, out of Allen, Texas. Awesome, and you guys specialize in, I'm guessing, Rachidactylus or New Caledonian species? Yes, just the crested geckos oh, just right the now. Okay, yeah. awesome. Right. So in the crested world, there's really only a few genes that are directly like heritable. So what would those be? Yes, so these, this girl here is a probable cap, and we believe this to be recessive, along with the exanthic being recessive. And then the lilies are incomplete dominant. It's gonna be neat to see it all together. Wouldn't it be neat to have a four gene animal in a, in a crested gecko? Definitely, I can't oh, wait. Oh, I can't wait. Well, we'll be checking back with you to see yes, what happens. Yes, thank you. Really cool pairing on this one. This one came from um, a red rum lineage, which is a pastel line of boa constrictor, um, a VPI jungle bred to a Aztec IMG VPI. So this one has all the genes from the parents. This is a jungle pattern, Aztec pattern with IMG and VPI. So the IMG is adding to this chocolate color that we have right now. So with age, it's actually gonna get more chocolatey and the IMG over time will take over an animal completely in certain combos. If with your basic IMGs, with nothing else in them, you get a solid black snake as an adult. Um, there's one other gene like it, it's called uh, Midnight Chin, VPI, Tracy and Dave have it at their facility. That is what they believe to be a recessive IMG where this one right here is more of a dominant gene. This again, we talked about this has the jungle and the Aztec pattern in it. Now, if you take the Aztec pattern out of it and you just have jungle, you get more of a blockier pattern. You get your more bow ties, your more classic looking jungle. Jungle gene brings a lot of color to the table when it comes to your tail. So you start getting these really great oranges and reds coming through. And I really believe based on the parents being from Red Rum lineage, I think some of that color kind of fighting through on the pattern a little bit is all from the red rum in it. Justin! The show has been really awesome actually getting around finally on Sunday just to look around a little bit. We're at Jason Kinniger's place here and uh, we have some awesome snakes. We're looking at this crazy paradox clown. I think Summer showed this in our St. Louis video, but it's growing. It looks amazing. Making the rounds is some really, really cool stuff and it's always neat to come and see what other people are working on, steal all their ideas, and then claim them as my own. This is the Pack Rex, the only aluminum metal frame in the market in the United States. It is also the only metal rack system in the world that I'm aware of with interchangeable tub sizes. Without having to reconfigure the metal frame, you can remove a smaller tub and interchange it with a bigger tub. So you can use one frame for multiple purposes rather than needing a frame for your hatchlings and a frame for your whole backs and a frame for adults. You could fit everything in one system. Uh, tub slides out just like anyone else's. Our aluminum belly heat panels, all insulated. And then the panel that holds it, I call a hanger. And it's a single piece with the channels, the backstop, and all the hardware to hold it to the frame all in one piece. Awesome. And you take that, and you can actually use it as the lid and transport your animals in their own enclosure, rearrange things and allow you to keep an uh, animal with its own lid without having to clean everything over and over again. So at this point, we're in pre-order. We're expecting these to ship in about two months and we're expecting the larger tub sizes to be available by early summer. Website is packracks.com. Corey Martin with Corey Martin Reptiles, and uh, she's got a lovely table here with some awesome ball pythons, 
But what caught my eye was this not ball python, this inland carpet python. So Corey, could yes. you tell us a little bit about this animal? Absolutely. So there are several subspecies of carpet pythons. And inlands are one that is not quite as common in the reptile hobby. These are hands down my favorite snakes. They're sweet, they're lovely, they're interesting, they're fascinating. They want to know about the world and they are friendly. So I have never had one even attempt to bite me. It's just, it's amazing. These are the only carpet pythons I have where I'll just reach my hand into the cage and grab them out instead of using a hook. Wow. Um, they're, they're just incredible. So tell me about what you guys have going on at the Nature's Edge Wildlife and Reptile Rescue. <laughs> so we are, uh, we're kind of twofold. We're a wildlife rescue, but we're also a reptile rescue. So we take in sick, injured, orphan wildlife uh, with the goal of getting them back out into the wild. Um, then we also take in pet uh, reptiles. So we're like a dog and cat rescue for reptiles. So I couldn't help but notice at your booth you have these amazing birds of prey over there. Yep. So do you guys also work with those type of animals? These birds are not releasable. They can't go back out into the wild. So we use them for education and then we use the peregrine and the American kestrel to actually hunt with. So we're also licensed falconers and we take those birds out, let them go, they hunt their natural prey and then come back to us. That is amazing. So this, I, I'm, I'm intrigued by the kestrel. Label says it's the smallest falcon in North America. Correct. So where are they native to? Where can you find them in the wild? Locally native to Texas. Um, you can find them almost all over the United States. Uh, most people kind of miss them because they, they're so small. They're about uh, the size of a cardinal, uh, but they sit on the high line. So if you're driving down the road and you look on the high line wires, if you see a bird that's sitting there and they make their tail kind of bob like this, they're the only ones that It'll do that. So if you wow. see a bird sitting on the high wire and its tail is going like this, and you might be able to get some video of it. Yeah. Um, well, what's it's funny an American is, kestrel. As you were doing that with your hand, the bird in the background was, was doing, doing it at the same time. So <laughs> perfect. I, it's like perfect. Yeah. <laughs> quick, what is your history with Justin? He actually bought a pair of king snakes from me. I think they were Sinaloa and milk snakes, and he was asking me some questions about breeding, and I told him, and he successfully bred those when he, I guess he was in college. Here he is today, right? Yeah, so that was actually the first snakes that Justin bred ever. Yeah were this pair that he got from yeah, you. Yeah, Sinaloa so. and milk snakes, yeah. Yeah, so you yeah, know what, probably 20, 25 years ago Probably or something like so, that. Yeah. yeah. I don't have the emails anymore. Yeah. So coming to the show when I saw this booth, I was drawn to it because of your amazing black-headed pythons. So can you tell me a little bit about what you're working with and what sure. you like about that species? So I started working with black-headed pythons in 2003. I have basically two lines of blackheads. Uh, I call these my Swiss line. And so I kind of been working these, line breeding them for many, many years and getting really nice. I call them high voltage electric blackheaded pythons because they've got just such really nice yellows and oranges. For and sure. I see behind you too, you have some that are not quite so yellow and orange. What yeah. do we have going on here? So this is uh, my xanthic line of uh, blackheads. And so these are super silver colored. And so that's the second line I have. And I'm actually trying to work on like an ocelot line myself wow. right now. A lot of my Swiss line animals have these cool circles in their sides. And I'm gonna kind of match some of those up to try to get circles all the way back up and down the body. That's amazing. Yeah. We have found a wild Brian Hamstra. Hello. And uh, he's not alone. Who do you got with you? I have this beautiful Mochina reticulated python female. Is this a project you've been working on? Nope, this is my first retic, just for fun. Very nice. And you in. went with the, the big the big girls. 
you got a female, you're going all in? Yeah, if I'm gonna get, I might as well get a female. Awesome. Because well, if I want another one, I don't want to have two males in the same go. room. And uh, he's not only holding that reek pick, what is in your other hand? A little uh, calendar from Canova because last year's about to run out. The or, photos in there from Brittany are amazing. He said it, not me. The photos are amazing. They are. So check it out, shop.canovareptiles.com. Get your calendar for 2022. Yes, Thanks, Brian. We'll yep. see you later. Thank you. Bailey and Bailey reptiles. Awesome spread of ball pythons, some colubrids, and then the snake that a lot of people are talking about here at the show is this pied blood python. So how long have you had it? Uh, I've had that one for about six months, something like that. I picked it up uh, actually in Daytona last year, you got, right you after nice. the show. Yeah, so awesome. I've, that's I've, exciting. I've had it for a little while. Right now I have one. There's no hets for sale. You know, anything that's been released thus far has been visuals. So right. I mean, the people that have bought into the project have visuals and that's it. So yeah, make your own hats. That's how that's going to work out. Yeah, well, it, it's super exciting. Obviously, pied is a gene, I think that in any species, everybody gets really excited about. Oh, absolutely. Um, what are you personally most excited to do with this gene now that you have it in your collection? <clears throat> really, in, in my opinion, I think a lot of people right now are thinking about what happens when I add golden eye and matrix and what do I, and, and I said, man, I, I think the demand for the project and the price point that a lot of people are gonna have to buy into that initially, I'm really more focused on just making more pies right now. I okay. mean, I will put something in it. You want something growing up and something cool, but I mean, right now, I think the focus really should be just getting more pies on the market versus trying to get pies with a bunch of other stuff in it. I mean, I'm obviously super excited to get T negative and T positive albino in it. Yeah. The color change is going to be right. really good. So the, the, the dream sickle of the. <laughs> Yes. The blood, yeah. The blood so I mean, T negative albino is probably going to be right there in one of the first ones. Uh, you know, we'll see when when the time comes to start breeding what really happens. But I mean, initially my thought now is I really just want to make a bunch of more pies, mm -hmm. um, and I do want to get you know one of the one of the albinisms in it, T yeah. neg or T positive for sure. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for bringing it to show sure. everybody, and uh, yeah, looking forward to what you do with it. Awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at the show with me, the awesome animals everybody has. Always love seeing the passion that people have for the animals they work with and the projects that they're pursuing. So great time, great show. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out the vlog on Friday with Justin.